Hi everyone, my name is Pat, and I'm a recovering alcoholic and addict. Um, in my story, it's alcohol and drugs because they went hand in hand in my life. Um, my sobriety date is July 6, 2003. I have two home groups, and my sponsor is Laura S. I, um, I came into the program when I was 44 years old. I started at 13 years old. Um, was drinking mostly, and then I went to pills, and my drug of choice was speed. Um, so scotch and speed was my, uh, they were my idols in my life. I uh, drank all through high school. I hung out with the, uh, a bad crowd. You know, the badder the better. I didn't know what it was to be uh, normal. Um, if you didn't drink or drug, I didn't want any part of you because that's all I knew. I, uh, this disease took my whole life away from me. It broke up relationships. It broke up marriages. It broke up friendships. I was married twice, once to a, uh, a drug dealer, and uh, my second marriage lasted 18 years, but the drugs and the alcohol kind of ended it. I didn't lose anything in my sobriety as far as material-wise, um, but I lost myself. I lost my morals. I lost my, my will to live. I wasn't worthy to be called a lady because I did things out there that um, I'm not proud of. I did anything and everything to get what I wanted. Um, I came from an Irish Catholic family who drank, and I thought it was okay to drink because everyone had fun. And I wanted to have fun too. I drank because I wanted to drink. I could have stopped, but I didn't want to stop. I didn't want to stop, I was having fun, so I thought I was. And it, um, it ruined my life. I, uh, I had a lot of bottoms. I had a lot of blackouts. My friends tell me today that um, there's things I did that I didn't even know I did. I went through a fence. I didn't know it. I put my hand through a, a bathroom door in a bar to get after some girl, and I didn't even know that. There were so many things that I didn't remember. Um, but I thought I was having fun. I didn't want to stop didn't want to stop because I was, I don't know if you call it a functioning alcoholic or addict, I kept a job. Um, I raised my son, took him to football games, baseball games. I was always there for him. Hung over, but I was always there for him. I never had a DUI, never went to court, never went to jail. But I lost myself through it all. And I found that out when I came into the rooms. I found out that it wasn't normal to be the person I was. It wasn't normal to hit people, to pull people out of cars, to um, start fights. It wasn't normal. And I couldn't wait. You know, I would count the hours of how much time I would have to drink and drunk. I would want to stay out all night. And I did stay out all night and go to work the next morning. See, speed kept me up all the time. And it made me able to drink a lot. It ruined a lot of relationships. And like I said, it ruined two marriages. I was married for 18 years. And it killed it. It killed everything that I, I loved. Um, but I was able to stay close to my son, close to my family. Without my family, I don't think I would have ever made it. They were my, they were my rock. And I see here that, you know, I, we admitted we were powerless over the addict. You are powerless over the addict because the addict isn't your child. The addict is some crazed person, which I was. I would do anything, steal, cheat, lie, to get whatever I wanted. And that's what the addict does. They will connive, they will lie, they will take all your possessions because they're the addict. But once they get clean and sober, I realize that I am not that person. I am Pat, I'm a worthy woman today of God. I can call myself a lady today. And I know you parents are having a hard time. 
my parents had a hard time because my brother and I were addicts. And they went through more with him than me because I hid it well. You know, I'd stay in my house and pull the shades down. I didn't answer the phone. My partying was mostly on the weekends, but then my weekends would start on a Tuesday. And they would go till Saturday or Sunday morning, and then I'd have to, all day Sunday to recover to go to work. I drank at work, I got high at work, but I was able to hold a job. I guess you can, I was functioning, but I wasn't in my right mind. I wasn't in my right mind, and I found that out when I came into these rooms. All in high school, I hung around with the people that loved to do what I did. I went out with drug addicts. They hid their stuff in my locker. I mean, I was taking on a lot of responsibility for these other people, and I could have, I could have gotten in trouble, but I didn't. I had a lot of friends die of this disease. I had three friends that were killed. Um, because of this addiction, and a lot of people died that I knew from this addiction. I didn't have any friends. I thought they were friends, but today I call them acquaintances because they didn't care. Once I came into the program, they didn't want anything to do with me. Um, I only have two close friends that stuck by me the whole time. Through all this, I raised a son. He's going to be 34 next month. And um, he doesn't drink, drug, or smoke. I call him my miracle child. And people say, where did he come from? Because your ex-husband drank, you drank and drug. He is, I call him, he's my miracle child. He calls himself a straight edge. He wants no part of any of this mess. He told me he had four beers his entire um, four years at college. And he said, Ma, I don't understand these people. Why do they drink? They just get stupid. I was blessed. I was really blessed. And what got me was when he turned 21, I was so excited. I'm like, I'm going to take him for his first drink. And he looked at me and he said, why do you want to put that poison in my body? This is my 21-year-old telling me that. And I just laughed at him. And now today it's like, wow, I should have listened to him. But I didn't want to listen to anybody. I wanted to ride that roller coaster. I didn't want to stop. That's all I knew from the age of 13. And today, um, it's a wonderful life today. You know, I could have died out there. I put myself in places that I should have been dead. I put myself around people that I should have been dead. I hung around with a bad motorcycle club. And I could have been dead, you know. It's amazing. And I, I say that God let me survive for a purpose. When I came into the rooms, I was 44. I wanted it. I really wanted it because I couldn't get the speed. I couldn't get high anymore. I couldn't get high anymore. I couldn't get the drink down anymore. And I seen what other people were doing with their lives. My old acquaintances were sober and clean. So I went to an AA meeting and I was listening to everyone share. And I, I raised my hand and I said, I'm Pat and I don't think I'm an alcoholic or an addict. And a woman turned to me and she said, if, if this woman didn't think she had a problem, which was me, she wouldn't be here. And I, immediately I said, wow, I'm an addict and an alcoholic. She saved my life that night. So when you go to meetings, it's like I take what I need and leave the rest. And I took that line and I ran with it. Because I would have been dead. I abused my body for 30 plus years. And I'm still alive to tell about it. Um, I got, I did my 90 and 90. I went to meetings. I got a sponsor. I got a home group. I made coffee. I got active. And I put my hand out to the next person that comes in, to the newcomer, because someone was there for me when I walked in, so I have to be there for them. It's amazing the, the people that you meet in these, in these rooms. I mean, I was so scared walking in, so scared. They say, like, you walk in and you have the deer in the headlight look because everybody knows you're new. And I latched on to the people with not the longest sobriety, but the strongest sobriety. And it was a lot of men because I drank with men. I had, to, um, I had a problem with women. I didn't trust women because they were like me. I wanted your, your man. I wanted your anything you wanted. That's the type of girl I was. And I didn't like the other women because they were like 
me. So I hung with the guys. And I got sober with them. It's just amazing how these programs work. Um, today I have three, four sponsees. I'm coming up on nine years of sobriety, and it's really hard each day. I have to, um, I work steps one, three, and ten every day. I have to admit I'm powerless. Yes, there are times I still want to drink and get high. <coughs> I can feel the drip going down. I can smell the booze. I can, I can feel all that, but that's just, a, it's a split second. And then I say to myself, do I want to give up all these years that I put into this? For what? To hurt myself? To hurt my family? Um, my job? Everyone in my, uh, I work for Princeton University and they know I'm an alcoholic. And I reach my hand out to other people. Um, I volunteer for the City of Angels now because I feel it's, I have to give back what I was freely given. I will help anyone that comes in to the City of Angels. My roommate and I, Barbara, she works with um, Redneck. They do interventions and we take in girls that are detoxing and that are going away the next day or in a couple days and we keep them in a safe haven. And to me that's, it's incredible that I'm able to do this today. And I know all you parents hurt, my parents hurt. You can't trust the addicts. You can't trust us. And you can't enable us because we'll take everything from you. We'll take your heart, we'll take your money, We'll take your soul. I know I hurt my parents tremendously going through this. Um, just keep on loving them. You know, tell them that you're there, that you'll always be there for them, but don't enable them. Don't give them money and just pray. I became a born again Christian in this program. I was brought up Catholic and uh, I always, I was, when I came in, you know, I did my steps, I continued to do my steps, but I was missing something in my life, so I'd start going to prayer meetings, and I wanted a closer relationship to God, but I didn't know how to get it. So I found, I found God again in AA, and he was always there, I just pushed him away, but I found him in AA, and uh, I put my whole life in his hands. And that's what you have to do. You have to put your whole life in his hands and the addict in his hands because what's going to be is going to be. And you just got to pray. And that's all I do is pray today. I became a born-again Christian. I became a deaconess at my church. And who would ever thought? I was not worthy to be called a lady. Now I'm a lady. And I love, I love Jesus. I love my church. I get involved. I keep my head active. Because if I sit there and think and think and think, the squirrel goes around in my head. They call it the committee. And it's like, hmm, what can I do? I still go by liquor stores. And I go, well, if I can, I can go in there. Who would, who would know? He would know. God would know. I'm very spiritual because of this program. I have a lot of people to thank for this. And I know what everybody's going through in here. This program is hard for me. I have to work at it every day. Some days are easier than others. But as long as I know I have people like you, people in my fellowship, God, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. And I'm just so blessed that I'm here to tell you my story. Because some kids, one time they go out and they're dead. My brother died three times and they brought him back to life. He was a heroin addict. He's got over 100 days clean. And he sees what it's like to be clean and sober. He's got a smile, he glows. And you can tell the people who really, really want it because they put their all into it. And that's what I did. I put my whole self into it. I didn't have any relationships for two years, two and a half years, because I wanted to work on myself. They tell you not to make any major decisions for a year. 
But I didn't when I first came in. Got divorced, sold a house, bought a house, and started a relationship at three months sober, and that was not a good idea. Um, but I stayed clean and sober through it all. And then I got rid of that person. Worked on myself for two and a half years because I needed it. You know, they, they say, put everything aside, put all the people aside except for your family, and work on yourself. You know, go deep, go deep within, and try to find that person, not the addict, that person that you were before you started abusing. This disease can kill you. It breaks up a lot of relationships, a lot of friendships, um, a lot of families. I'm so glad City of Angels is here for me. Um, it gave me Give me a sense of belonging. It gave me a sense that I, I can do, I can do anything if I put my mind to it. I don't lie anymore, I don't cheat anymore, I don't steal anymore. And that, that's, that's amazing. And each day I grow, I'll never be recovered. I'm in recovery. I'll be recovered when I die and I have to work this program until I die. I do the steps the best of my ability. Without the steps, I don't think I would have made it. I was a basket case when I came into the program. I wasn't happy. I was three months over and I said, I'd rather be drinking because I'm not happy. And my sponsor worked on the steps with me. She was a hard sponsor, very hard sponsor. But I needed that because I needed that kick to go, go, go. I loved her and I hated her at the same time because I wasn't going to take anything from any woman. I didn't want any, any feedback. I didn't hurt, want her to tell me what to do. But I picked, she picked me and I stuck with her because I wanted what she had. Now she's got 21 years of sobriety and I admire her. And it's people like that that keep me going. You know, I see how many years they have and what they've went through. And it, it just gives me positive feelings that I can do this. I really can do this. I started six meetings in my sobriety. I have a meeting here at City of Angels. And that gives me a sense of um, accomplishment, you know, that I can help people. Because without that, I have nothing. I have God. But my goal now is to help these kids because they don't get it. And I said to myself, I can't judge them. I want to shake them sometimes, but I can't judge them because who am I to judge? I didn't come in until 44. I'm going to give these kids so much um, to come in at an early age is unbelievable. I wish I had come in at that time, but then I wouldn't have a testimony that I have to give to others. So I'm on the fence about that. But I love these kids. I love all your kids. And I try to give them comfort. Try to give them words of wisdom. Because it will take you out. You know, I thought I was invincible just like you guys. Nothing's going to happen to me. I'm not good. Well, I thought I was going to die by the time I was 30. That's the mindset I had. So I did everything in my power to get high, get drunk. Everything. I just shoved in everything. Because I didn't think I was going to make it. When I hit... 31, I'm like, wow, okay, so I can do it some more. But there's so much out there now. I mean, people are going to heroin right away. I started out with Boone's Farm strawberry wine. I mean, that was my big thing. And I was scared of heroin. I was scared of heroin. I didn't want to do it. I never shot up. Um, and I feel sorry for the parents, you know, we put you through hell. We put you through hell. We don't care. But like I said, it's the addict. That's not your child. And once they do get clean and sober, you'll see the difference. You'll see the glow. You'll see the happiness and the smiles that they have. And then your child will be back. It might take some time. But if they really want it, they'll come around.
So I thank you for letting me share my story. Until I have. Thank you. Thanks for sharing.